Right. Sakin. Yes. Tell us where you're from. Yeah, I'm from Kathmandu, Nepal. Kathmandu, Nepal. Yes. That's not a suburb of Albuquerque, is it? No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. How long does it take to go from there to here? Uh, at least 24 hours. Yeah. Yeah. That is far. And you have several businesses in Nepal. Yes. Roughly how many businesses do you have in Nepal? Uh, roughly, I think, eight. Eight businesses. Yeah. And so you just, you look young, but you're 77, is that right? No, <laughs> I'm not 77. <laughs> but you have eight businesses. Yeah. And not all eight businesses are technical. Yes, uh, right. they are out of technical as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So one of your businesses is an agency. Yes. Right? Yeah. Tell us about that business. Um, that business is, is more about we initially started off. Um, there's two businesses which does agencies. It's like uh, uh, catch internet and uh, web, uh, web, web exports. So they do agencies. Uh, initially we started up with uh, Odex. The freelancing site mm -hmm. and then after that we went to the referral and we have existing clients and all so which is which keep us uh, giving the projects so are you done Ode Odesk changed the name to something Elan, like I don't Upwork, know. Upwork. Yeah, Upwork. Upwork yeah but but when it was Odesk you were picking up jobs from there yeah and then did you end up stopping at some point uh, in Catch Internet, I end up stopping. I was once uh, doing a lot of uh, Odex work, and even we got big clients like Mogoldam Media Group and uh, Music Business Association here in states. So we even uh, hosted those sites in uh, WordPress.com VIP. And at the time, it was really tough. So you got projects on Odesk that yeah. were big enough yes. to host on VIP, yes. WordPress VIP. And I work with Jake. Um, mm -hmm. He was in not ten up at the time, different yeah. company. So he was also handling the same project with me. Got it. Yep. Wow. Off Odesk. Yes. That's not, that's not normally what you think of when you think of an Odesk project, right? You think of like a twelve dollar effort or a sixty dollar effort, but this was yeah. a much bigger project. Yes. And I was the full time developer for them, and we even uh, had uh, lots of other people working. So. Yep. Yep. So you built up that agency mm -hmm. off of taking different size projects. Yes. Right? And how big did you grow that agency? I'm like, if you talk about catch -inter, we grew really big at the stage that I, I, I couldn't sleep that much because like there was lots of lots of work and that's why um, that's why I took a vacation and went to Australia and had a one month vacation and so I thought like what I do the next and it happens to be what camp uh, Melbourne which I attended and then I got the idea of some meeting themes and all those things that's how the uh, catch theme started up but then I um, met a few other people who can handle the agency's work so we hand over those to the um, my friends uh, which are running uh, businesses but I'm also one of the partners over there so got it. yeah but that still didn't tell me how big you got it yeah, I'm mean like now we have if you we have all the technical companies in the same building. Okay. Uh, so what we do is uh, it's so easier to manage. Yeah. And that's and how big is that? It's, it's seventy people. Seven zero. Yes. You have seventy people that are all doing WordPress work. Yes. And how do you get the leads for those projects? I don't know, like. It will be surprising to say that Odex gave me all the agencies, and after that it's just referral, like like Mogoldam referral this people, music association people referral that people, that people. I was like, it was coming even even not doing anything. They just said like, do you want to work in this project? I said yes. Why not? So I, I just want you to know, all these people hate you, <laughs> right? <laughs> Because you're basically like, I did nothing, and then people just yeah. threw money at me. Yeah, because I did one thing good. But like right, One project well, and well, that just cascaded yeah. from there. Yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the only thing that I did. Even in the theme, I did one thing good, and everything came back. I even, did, I even didn't do SEO. 
know, like I still haven't done SEO in my casting. Yeah. Still, uh, I think WordPress is awesome. It's doing great. So the theme, you have a theme company. Yes. And you have several themes. How many themes do you guys have? Uh, we have about um, 40 free themes and about more than 40 to 50 premium themes. Okay, 40 free, 40 to 50 premium. And where do you distribute the 40 to 50 premium? Uh, I distribute in uh, my own site, castheme.com, mm -hmm. and also one theme in uh, wordpress.com, and two themes in Theme Forest, and uh, various theme in uh, Mojo Marketplace and Creative Market. So you have, you're using a couple different places to do distribution, but it's you don't have all of them over at Mojo, or you don't have all of them over at, at Theme Forest. So how how do you get the word out? I mean, obviously you haven't. You just said you haven't done SEO for your, your own stuff. Yeah, yeah. So how are people finding these themes? Uh, it's more organic uh, kind of thing. For cats themes, what we do is like uh, we are in a premium business. So we submit most of the th uh, free themes in WordPress.org and some of them don't have in .org, but like we submit free themes. That free themes uh, organically captured our uh, users. And um, once when I was starting, at, at least 10% used to... 10% used to come and then 1% used to buy it. Yeah. So it was a great conversion. But now it's more saturated. But then again, it's it's worth uh, great in my own side. But in 2017, I, I already told in my presentation that, okay, we had a, a very saturation point. Like it was not growing. So I entered the marketplace and tried a different marketplace. And I, I liked the WordPress.com. Yeah. yeah. It's awesome. So you have a theme company, you have a, a development WordPress agency. Yes. Um, but uh, you do more. Yeah. And one of them is t-shirts. Yeah, we do t-shirts. How did you get into t-shirts? Uh, it's again, uh, I like to thank community, like WordPress community, so great. Uh, we're organizing WordCamp. I'm the founding member of WordPress Nepal community, and we always had a problem of t-shirt quality in Nepal. Like they were like a little rough and. Little thick, and whenever I come to WordCamp US, WordCamp, um, then I have like little slick t shirts, and I, I see Jetpack t shirt, WooCommerce t shirt, it's quite nice quality. It's not 100% cotton, but it's like mix of cotton and polishes, and so like, I like that. Like, it can go really well, it's soft and nice and easy to carry because it can switch on. So I thought, like, why don't I, I have those kind of t shirts? And I just search around, nobody sells that. So most people, just so you know, in terms of feedback, yeah. most people when they're like, I like that kind of t-shirt, yeah. and there's no company that sells it, they say, bummer, there's nobody that sells it. But you, you're like, why don't I start a t-shirt yeah, company? Yeah, that's what that's like. Why don't I start a t-shirt? My first customer is WordCamp. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. I will be my own customer. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you go about starting a t-shirt company? What did it take? Um, I'm like, I had a bunch of um, um, like uh, two or three, uh, three, three uh, young people. They were really excited about getting t-shirt. And we have designers, uh, which in theme business, we don't have, our design doesn't get packed all the time. And there are really good fine artists as well. One of them made uh, Sam's portrait, family's portrait, I think. Yeah, so. I saw it. Uh, so they were free kind of thing. So like I said, I, I, that would be good opportunity for them to design t-shirt as well and then uh, sell. So that's how I thought. Like, so that's the design. So you had your own staff that had some free space to design. But but you have to print t-shirts, yeah, yeah. right? That's like, what <laughs> How did you do that? Yeah, that's what like uh, the other partners. Uh, they, uh, I, I show them the materials. I want this and this, and the other partners research about it, and they import the materials, and we start the stitching and all those factory. We created a factory and stitching. And all <laughs> yeah, it's cat. See how it just rolls off his lips. We just started a factory. <laughs> Yeah, you know, what am I going to do this weekend? How about I start a factory? So I get that you import materials. I yeah. get that. That's, yeah. That doesn't break my brain. Uh -huh. um, I'm just trying to figure out that part right in the middle. Like, I got designers. I got material. No, but you have to actually, yeah. you have to make shirts. Yeah, right? because, like, the manpower is not that uh, expensive in Nepal. So that's always a good point. Did you have to go out and find and hire people to be t-shirt makers? Yeah, I'm like, in the 
first we started on with just um, outsourcing it. Yeah. The stitching company. Yeah. Then we started in house. Then you started bringing in house. Yeah. You also have to buy equipment for that. Yes. How do you know which equipment is the right equipment? Oh, that 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 was not my part on that. No, you just gave that to someone else to figure yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot figure out everything by myself. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm doubting that, but I'm, I'm willing to go with it. So you spin up a, you spin up a t-shirt company, mm -hmm. and your first client is your own WordPress community. Yes. Right? You make t-shirts for the WordCamps. Yeah. Right? Where'd you take it from there? And then we started uh, targeting more corporate clients. So we didn't went one-to-one uh, -one customers. So first we went uh, B2B, business to business. So yeah. we, we, um, we focused on events. We focused on um, the company's own t-shirt because everyone is nowadays branding their own yeah. t-shirts and everything. So we started on that. And now we have a physical store uh, which sells. Uh, Your own designs? Yeah, directly to the personal. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, How's that business doing? Uh, right now, it's just picking up. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't say it's highly profitable, but it's profitable enough to run a store. Yeah. Because we didn't have a store before, so right. uh, yeah, it's profitable enough to run a store. So we just opened this year the stories. Like yeah. now, just we are offering to um, personal people. Before that, we were just P two B only. Yeah. Mm. So you got a web agency, you got a theme store, you got a t-shirt store. Um, Supports and all. Yeah, but, but then at some point you decided after school programs? Yeah. How did that come about? Like I came from management background. I did my MBA in Singapore, right? And then after that, um, the education system in Nepal was not good. So I teach uh, MBA students in Nepal back home for seven years. Um, uh, so in, I was, your, in your free time? Yeah, in the morning time. Like I was like, <laughs> so from the morning seven uh, seven to nine, I used to teach in MBA program. Then I go to office, and then I was working hard. Start your day job. Yeah. yeah, day job, and then. All those things. So I knew that there was something not working. And uh, after I have my child, I know that, okay, what? There's something missing again, you know? There's no after school, where can I send my child to? Yeah. And I said, okay, there is a problem again. So whenever I see a problem, I try to create a company to solve that. Uh, so uh, we are the first company to establish after school in Kathmandu. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. And that that could have been enough, right? But um but I think you're looking at a preschool now. Yeah. Um, so from April, we're starting up with a preschool. And we just posted on Facebook and all that. Uh, we are now open for admissions and all. <laughs> and the construction is full phase. Because like the after school is mainly three to six. <laughs> but but those places where like the, our staff were free from morning. So it's like, OK, well, what do I need to do it? And also, uh, also the um, uh, preschools. Either we we have to go for expensive school, uh, which has good preschool, and that's not everyone cup of tea, or you have to go to like really bad bad preschool. So there was not anything in between which can, uh, and most of the people in uh, Kathmandu is in between stays, like right? yeah. not that high stays. So we wanted to capture that in between stage people, and so we opened. So there's really two dynamics going on, right? You're you're always looking for what's a problem and yeah. can I solve it? But you're also talking about targeting specific market sectors, yeah. right? Yeah. So it may be that there's a solution for the high end mm -hmm. or it may be a solution for the super low end, yeah. but in the mid market, you're like, hey, there's a gap. Yes. And so let me go address it. Yes. Right? And you normally are you're listening for those issues from your own employees? Yeah, own employees, my friends, circle, because like I, I established after school, after giving uh, birth to, right? Yeah. After I have my own son and I, because I, now I have a circle of uh, new parents. Yeah. And then everyone talk about what are yeah. things working in Captain what are things not working? So that's how, whenever I talk, like even, even like uh, there's other examples, just like theme review as well, same thing. I was reviewing thing and that uh, Emil proposed me, do you want to own a theme review company? I said, why not? Sure. That's I just quit with it. That's it. That's right. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, you why step not? in, there's yeah. an opening, we'll go after it. Yeah. And that's how you have eight companies. Yeah. How many total employees do you have? 
uh, all around, I, I cannot count because like I just overlook on the management side and right. board side. But in the IT only, I look around because I'm in the same building working. So that's why I know 70 to 75. But, but it's hundreds. I think yes, yeah. it's had to be hundred. And, and and I'm really glad that I could make that changes to Kathmandu because that was the only reason I flew back to home so that I can at least contribute something to the community itself. Otherwise, I would have stayed here in States yeah. or in Singapore. How often do you make it back to the US? Um, I come here at least once a year. Okay. Yeah. But it's easier, given all the different stuff you're running over there, to live out there. Uh, yeah, somehow I got to manage. I start learning to manage that, okay, now I can leave. And uh, last year I took two months vacation. This year I'm taking one month vacation for US. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm trying off like taking more vacations and checking out if they can do it or yeah. not. <laughs> and I'm flexible enough. If they cannot do it, I'll fly back. And if they can't do it, I'll just relax back. What, what are you learning as tips in terms of how to get it so that they can take care of it without you there? So I'm giving them more of a leadership kind of thing, like um, um, so they they try to like um, if if someone someone is looking at the operations, I'm trying to make like a design team, operation team, and also like um, we have our own uh, kitchen team. Um, so everything is more operated. We have operation team, and now we have production team and design team. So it's 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 more like functional. Everything is working smoothly on that scale. Yeah. So. So uh, nowadays, only for like if they have any discussion or major confusion, then I need to be there, or I, I can do it virtually nowadays. Yeah. So that's easy. Um, I, I talk with them once a while, even when I'm here. So I talk with the leads, like, how are you doing? Okay, if there is anything. Even if they don't call me, I just make sure, and I just talk with them and say, is everything okay? Do I need to help on anything? I keep uh, asking them and thanking them, like, okay, you are doing great job, and I like to thank. Thank you very much. And so, do you need anything from here? <laughs> and you have partners that are in some of these businesses, yeah. right? Um, are they active in any part of running it, or are they only financial partners? No, they are active in running as well. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's several of you running all of these companies together. Yes. How did you find those partners? Oh, that's that's a tough question again. Uh, find the partners like uh, the education partner I find while I was teaching and all. So I had a group. Uh, T-shirt is like uh, it's the same um, like my friend circles. And for the IT is like more about word camps. Yeah. So I went to the word camps. I organized the word camp. They have more trust in me. Uh, and then they said, okay, okay, I can I can I can do great with you together. So. It's just like they really trust me, and so I'm so thankful for, to them. Whenever I said I want to start this, then everyone gets excited. Okay, let's do it. Let's. Wow, that's nice. That's good. That's good. Do you have any people in your world that every time you come up with a new idea to start a new company, that they go, Hey, 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 slow down. This is crazy. Uh, I haven't faced that because I don't tell to people unless I'm really prepared. Um, Unless I have a really good idea and I draft them, I try to. Uh, first thing I uh, I always explain to my wife, like, okay, this is the thing I'm excited about. Do you, do you think it works? And she's very supportive, and she said, I think you can try. Otherwise, there's always often there's nothing much to lose because we already have and um, business is going on. And so, and then uh, after I get convinced with that, then I talk with. So them. after it passes the wife test, yeah, yeah, then you take it to some friends. Yes, but you also prepare yeah. for those meetings, right? Yeah, not just I already the kind of crazy idea. No, no, no. You're actually not doing some research and work. Yeah, yeah, because that that was taught to me uh, while I was studying in Singapore. Like yeah. uh, you have to have a proper business plan to sew it. To the people before starting any businesses. So I, I have a proper plan. So what's next? What next is, again, a big question. Um, next, I was thinking of um, uh, bringing in organic farm uh, because uh, Nepal is very good at uh, farming and we have a, a lot of good natural herbs and everything. And even my sister-in-law, they have just established uh, Nepali tea traders which uh, import tea from Nepal and sell it here in the US. So I was thinking like maybe I'll go on like, I, I got the idea, I'm getting so excited. like. 
maybe uh, farm organic kind of farms or something like that. But that's just going in my mind. I've, I haven't prepared that at all. Here's good news. I heard it from Sam that he wants to potentially stop working on a Mac and just live on a farm and run one, right? Yeah. So there's a potential <laughs> business partnership there in the making. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. And WordCamp is great for all this finding. That's right. You find part. partners. Yeah. Did, did you want to be in a, Nep uh, a Nepali farm? Well, I, I think we need to trade tips. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, in the midst of all this, right, uh, are there ever quiet moments when you get nervous about everything that you're building? Any insecurity that seeps in and nervous about anything? Yeah, I had a, I had nervousness about the cash themes, like uh, whether yeah. it will go on downsize or like uh, whether it will go more on saturation because it was in saturation point. Uh, right, it started. You started seeing it get yeah, flat get, and yeah, no growth, flat, yeah. and that starts to worry you. Yeah. In those moments, what do you do to get through it? Uh, I scratched my head first of all. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? What? What's wrong with it? Uh, like. And like, you know, when I developed, like in 2012, I just developed, I think, two or three teams, three teams, and it gave me like a whole year of profit. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's a great profit. But now it's like I'm making every month one theme and still getting <laughs> a year's worth of profit total. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, what, what's happening, you know? Yeah. And that that's, keeps me really worried, and that's why um, I consulted with different people and from the WordPress community itself. And then we changed from, um, development centric theme to design centric theme mm -hmm. so in 2000 uh, uh, the mid of 2017 we started to the design centric theme and and that paid us well and uh, two two of our themes which uh, did really good like fairity in wordpress.com and photography in wordpress.org gave us like really boom to ourselves yeah. and we are we are like and, and then I, that got me excited so, so part of that dynamic is you have a group of people you can go to to talk about your head scratching. Yeah, right? I'm like, there's lots of good friends in WordPress community. I just scratch and tell like, what's happening? Yeah. How do you, how do you know which, how, like, do you develop a core set of friends that you talk to? Do you just ask the questions to everybody? How do you figure out that, that support group to help you run your businesses? I know some of things are instinct, like I just, um, because like um, I, I was trying to do the dot com stuff and uh, that was like targeted. I wanted to David, to, I wanted to contact David exactly because he's handling WordPress.com premium team. So that was not instinct, that was like preciously I want to meet him, I want to network with him, I want to talk to him, I want to find the solution to go to dot com. And even I talked with various people, but he was the one. But he's, you, you had a target of who you wanted to talk to. Yeah. I, I have to make it to him, so I followed him. I talked with him, and then um, in, in 2016, um, I was WordCamp US speaker. At the time, speaker dinner was a great movement to talk to him. So I talked with him throughout, and he gave me good idea of design centric yes. thing. And and I would like to thank him. Like we got in dot com, and we get, we are getting good uh, themes yeah. by uh, after his feedback. Yeah. And that's that's the thing. And also, but taking like, but taking people's feedback means you also have to potentially change what you're doing yes is that hard for you uh, I'm not that resistant to change uh, um, especially if revenue is flat uh, yeah I'm <laughs> like yeah when your business is going flat <laughs> there's no option <laughs> try something change yeah, something yeah change something like uh, yeah I was like you know the cash team was the one of the main cash cow for my businesses it's, it was giving me a lot of money yeah and when it goes flat it was really really a serious problem so yeah. I had to I had to reach out but all, all the businesses are really picking up slowly and everything going good but now I'm more confident even cash team will do okay then I'm fine with it because all the companies are picking the other up, ones are yeah. picking up so. yeah. and that's that's one of the things that right we, when you're talking to business owners that diversification yeah. so that you're not relying on one revenue stream but having multiple revenue streams you can use the one 
to help you start the others off, but you want the others to grow yeah. so that you're not reliant on one. It ends up being a very, very helpful model. Yeah, yeah, I, I do that. And I, as I, earlier I talk about, I use community-based model for casting, but now with my studies and everything, I'm trying to move mix around with the management style. So I have like, I have now uh, freeze some of the amount for the operating, and uh, even if I go for loss for like one year, I should be able to survive. So those are the things now I'm making scenario plannings and yeah. all those things. Before, I was like so confident, like, okay, I can do anything. It will go such a still rock on. Mm -hmm. But now it's like, okay, I need to plan this. I need to plan that. Yeah, creating contingency plans. Yeah. Yeah, no, it totally makes sense. We have time for a question or two. Does anyone have a question? Yeah, right there. I'm just curious, I, I, I think you said it, but I missed it. Um, the t-shirt um, do you market that um, only in Nepal or also here in the U.S.? Or where, where is your market? Uh, currently only in Nepal. Uh, we are not that big enough to market here in the States. Uh, and secondly, um, in terms of potential businesses, have you thought about travel? Agencies? Yeah, there are lots of travel agencies. I didn't find problem in travel right now. If I find a problem in travel, definitely I will start. Because like there are lo lots of online businesses which is, I think, destroying the existing travel agency and, and, yeah. uh, and I don't think I can go on that segment. Uh, maybe, maybe... Um, uh, planning travel trekking sections can be a good like trek uh, uh, and a proper guide kind of things but not on travels because it's it's more it's like online businesses is like taking everyone putting booking from Expedia booking yeah. from TripAdvisor Lonely Planet also. well I was thinking more travel within um, Nepal yeah within the Nepal also they are doing that so like, yeah oh no Expedia like, yeah it's, they're trying their growth too so. So, Expedia is like they are, they are even doing it within the cities and within the everything. Even I booked everything from Expedia over here. Yeah. So it's like okay. So I'm like those are the big players already playing in there. Yeah. Uh, I think it's not a good idea for me. At least I'm not convinced not, with that. Not idea. Yet. Right. Yeah. We had a question over here. So did you, when you put your, some of your themes in different, when you put, you know, some in Envato and some at WordPress.com and some in uh, Mojo, was that on purpose? Were you trying to put some in different places or was it by for some other reason? Uh, right now I'm trying, it's, it's on trial phase, like yeah. I'm trying different market yeah. and, and You're doing it on purpose. Yeah, You're on trying purpose. to see, get feedback on what's going on. Yeah, I'm trying to see which type of theme sells where. Yeah. So I'm looking at what or looking at WordPress.com, what type of theme is needed there? When I'm looking at Theme Forest, what type of theme they are looking for? And I kind of somehow find out, like, okay, WordPress.com needs very niche theme, very focused, design centric, very, very good quality design. But if you go on Theme Forest, they just need Visual Composer and 10 and 15 pages of home page, different home pages. And like, <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, otherwise you will not sell. Like, if, yeah. you, are, if you are niche, then you are all. Already 10 cells yeah. for one theme. So I found out what uh, are the. So e every marketplace has their own yeah. market. So it depends on what you're focusing. You have to choose the marketplace. I think we shouldn't sell it in all the marketplace, but I didn't know which one to go, so I tried it all the marketplace. It's yeah. awesome. Let's give Sakina a hand. Thank you. Good stuff. We're going to take a little break and then we'll be back with John.